In 1960, a man pressed a button and created a beam of light so precise, so powerful, it would redefine the modern world. It could cut steel, perform surgery, carry music, store data, even guide missiles. And yet, it began as a scientific curiosity, a solution looking for a problem. This is the story of the first laser, of the people who imagined it, fought over it, and finally unleashed it. A story of vision, physics, and rivalry. The seed was planted in 1917 by none other than Albert Einstein. He was trying to understand how atoms interact with light. And in doing so, he proposed something strange, a process called stimulated emission. It suggested that if you hit an atom with just the right kind of photon, it could release another photon, identical in every way. Same energy, same phase, same direction, a cascade of perfect light. At the time, it was just a theory, but it would become the foundation of the laser. Fast forward to the 1940s. World War II is raging. Scientists are pushing radar to its limits. And in the US, a physicist named Charles Townes is thinking about something else, microwaves. What if Einstein's idea could work with microwaves? He called it the MASER, Microwave Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. In 1954, Townes built the first one. It worked, but it wasn't visible light. Meanwhile, in a Columbia University lab, a young physicist named Gordon Gould had an idea. What if you could take the Mazer and make it visible? A laser. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Gould was excited. He stayed up for hours, filling a notebook with diagrams, mechanisms, and possibilities. He even coined the term laser, but he made a crucial mistake. He didn't file a patent. Enter Theodore Maiman, a physicist at Hughes Research Labs in California. By 1960, others had tried and failed to build a working laser. Maiman took a different approach. Instead of gases or exotic materials, he used a synthetic ruby crystal. He wrapped it with a flash lamp, bounced light back and forth using mirrors, and pulsed it. On May 16, 1960, it happened. A beam of coherent red light, the first working laser. At first, nobody knew what to do with it. One physicist joked it was a solution in search of a problem. But soon, the applications exploded. Barcodes, CD players, laser surgery, fiber optics, nuclear fusion, industrial cutting, military targeting, the world lit up with lasers. But the laser story wasn't just about light. It was also about ownership. Gordon Gould, who coined the term, spent decades in legal battles over patent rights. He finally won, and collected millions in royalties. But the fight left scars on the physics community. Who truly invents something? The one who imagines it, or the one who builds it first? Today, lasers are everywhere. They repair vision, they read our data, they etch silicon chips, they entertain, they defend, and they continue to evolve. Modern lasers can fire pulses a femtosecond long. That's a quadrillionth of a second. They can simulate conditions inside stars. They can manipulate individual atoms. They might one day drive nuclear fusion. And all of it began with a strange little idea from Einstein, made real in a ruby. The laser is more than a tool. It is light sharpened into a blade, a symbol of precision, of power, of imagination. It began with a whisper in the quantum world. Now it speaks across the universe, science your body remembers. Subscribe, this story is just beginning.